Hi everyone, this is Dave, East Rosebud Fly and Tackle in Billings, Montana. Today I'm going to tie for you an old favorite midge pupa called the Brassy. It's a simple pupa to tie. It was originated on the South Platte in Colorado to fish those technical waters. Midges are a very, very important component of a fish's diet. In lakes and ponds where the midges grow large, even up to size 10, they can comprise 80% or better of a fish's diet over the course of the year. And midges occur everywhere. Even in oil pools, there are species of midges that live there. So in clear, cold trout streams, in stagnant pools, in swamps, in mud, the midges are everywhere. They don't have as many different species as the beetles do, but they're certainly more abundant in a day, day in and day out basis. Uh, in the midge group, in the chironomids, the diptera, the true flies are also included. Things like crane flies, mosquitoes, deer flies, horse flies, black flies, and of course they can range anywhere. Crane fly larvae up to several inches long, all the way down to too tiny to tie. So the midges are an uh, important component. In streams, typically the species are smaller, 18s and smaller. In lakes, however, like I said, the midges can get up to a size 10. And I'll, in another video, I'll show you a good lake midge. So what I'm doing here, and you can use a straight nymph hook, you can use a curved scud hook. This is simply a size 18 nymph hook. And I'm using size 12 aught Vivas thread. So all I'm going to do is start the thread right behind the eye here. And just make a few wraps to get the thread tight on and then this is just a piece of copper extra small wire now of course as you go up in hook sizes you should probably go up in the size of the wire that you're using and since I'm just going to convention wrap this conventionally I'll attach it on the far side of the hook make a nice smooth thread base back over the copper wire to the end of the shank and then come back forward the midge pupa is characterized by an enlarged thorax like this brassy has, which is just dubbing. The actual larvae live in the vegetation. Some actually live down in the hypolimnia, the bottom of the lake where there's little or no oxygen. They're called bloodworms. When the midges um, convert to pupa, before, when the pupa rise up to the water to hatch, they can be suspended anywhere in the water column. In the summertime, you'll find them mostly between the thermocline and the surface. And in fact, the surface, just underneath the surface, can be literally covered by millions of midge pupa. And the fish will cruise and just sip them. But they can also be anywhere within the water column. So it's a good idea, particularly when you're fishing lakes and ponds, is to investigate different depths in the water column until you find out where the fish are. So all we're going to do now is wrap this copper wire forward in touching wraps. Then I could have gotten by with a slightly larger wire here, but this will work just fine. Keep your wraps slanted slightly backwards and let each wrap roll over the front of the, of the previous wrap. And even if you can't yourself see the midge pupa, hang it off of an indicator, hang it off of another dry fly. Or of course if you're nymphing, you can always use it as a trailer nymph off a point fly, a heavier nymph. But the midges, most midges have several different generations per year, so they're always there. They're particularly abundant in the winter time, like a river like the Bighorn in the Missouri. And that's an excellent time to be fishing it. Now we'll stop here. A couple of wraps of tight thread. Break our wire off like so. And then all we're going to use is just a little dab of black hair's ear dubbing. It doesn't take very much. Keep it thin. Keep it as close to the hook as you can. and then we'll simply wrap a small thorax on it. The thorax is a trigger for the fish on a midge pupa, so make sure that you do include that. It doesn't have to be large. 
but it just needs to be larger than the abdomen itself. Quick flip finish, and there you have the brassy. Give it a try, it's an easy fly for a beginner, and I think you'll be pleased with the results. Like I say, you can tie these in larger sizes for lakes and ponds, 14s, and down to as small as you dare for stream fishing. As always, thanks for joining. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to contact us. We'll see you next time.